Good afternoon. This is State Representative Holly Cheeseman, and I have the pleasure of being here virtually with Sherry Weiss of Niantic. And Sherry has been working very hard recently in this current epidemic and public, public health crisis on uh, a very important issue, food insecurity. And you're working with the Shoreline Soup Kitchen and Pantry. So Sherry, thank you for being here today. And if you can just tell us a bit about yourself, uh, your background and how you became involved with the Soup Kitchen and Pantry. Well, thank you, Holly, for having me. Um, I moved here 17 years ago and went to the First Congregational Church of Old Line. And they were looking for somebody to volunteer to run to the Connecticut Food Bank and pick up food for their uh, food pantry, which was part of Shoreline Soup Kitchen. So I started out as a volunteer um, going down to East Haven to uh, pick up truckloads of food for their pantry. And that was how it all began. So and then, have, yeah, you have a long history with the organization. Yeah, and then I ran their Westbrook Pantry. We have five food pantries in the program. Uh, Clinton, Westbrook, Old Saybrook, Old Lyme, and then East Lyme. And I ran the Westbrook one in the winter so that the couple who did run it could go off uh, on vacation and then helped with the Old Lyme food pantry. And back in 2009, we opened up the pantry in East Lyme. Um, now, so listening at the towns you're describing, I think a lot of people would think, well, we don't think of food insecurity in these neighborhoods but obviously it does exist. So can you talk about that sort of hidden, you know, crisis yeah. that many people face? Well, uh, years ago, uh, it took one minister to realize that he had people in his own town of Essex that needed uh, food and they did a soup kitchen and it started very small, like seven people and it kept growing. So Shoreline Soup Kitchens has nine soup kitchens and the five pantries. Um, all across the shoreline. Um, we have 11 town district that we distribute food to. And we, right now during the pandemic, we are distributing to anybody who comes to our doors. But we found uh, when we opened up the East Line Pantry, we were trying to relieve some pressure off some of the other pantries, but the need was just as great in East Lyme, and 80% of my um, guests that visit me are from the East Lyme area, and it's people um, who have all different kinds of food insecurity reasons. Um, they might work a job that doesn't give them enough, and most of the time, people have enough money for their rent and their gas and their fuel, but the last thing that at the bottom of the chain is the food and to spend money on food um, becomes a, a hardship. So and that's why we're here. So are you, is it single people? Is it families? Is it older people? Is, there, is it across the demographic or do you find it more one group uh, as opposed I, to another? I find more, it's a lot of single people. We have quite a few elderly in town. Um, I, I do find most of my group is singles, smaller, um, packages that we give out of food. So we give three meals a day for three days worth of groceries. That's what we're trying for. It's been very difficult uh, to manage that during these times, trying to figure out how much food everybody's going to get. So I would say that when I pack our bags, because we're handing out package bags now, um, we are doing um, probably two thirds are for smaller families. And then the other third is for larger families. And where do you typically, um, from where do you usually get your donations? I know uh, here at, in, in Niantic, there's a, a drop off at St. John's Episcopal Church on Thursdays from 1030 to 12. And obviously that plays a role, but do you get it from you know, other food suppliers, commercial kitchens? Where does the food generally come from? So um, working with Shoreline Soup Kitchens, and I work for them, I do have a budget and monies come into Shoreline Soup Kitchen and, and much of that comes from single donors, not big corporations. Um, that makes up the whole, um, our budget is a lot of single donations. So we count on those small donations up to the large. And 
So I do have a budget. I get food from Gemma Moran Food Center. That's a feeder center. United Way runs that. And it's a feeder from the Connecticut Food uh, Bank. So I get to choose food off of an invoice now. We used to go shop on the floor, but right now I have an invoice. I can choose food. And then we have a truck that goes and picks that up. I also order food from a wholesaler. Like um, we give out fresh produce, um, fruits and vegetables, and eggs. Um, and butter. So I can order that each week from our um, wholesaler. And then the rest of the food is donations. I get, um, I get monetary donations given directly to me and I go and I'll buy um, bulk items, let's say from Aldi's. Right now, Stop and Shop has put a cap on it. We can't buy in bulk because they're having enough time getting their food. But I will go to Aldi's and they um, get a truck in every day. So I I can go right up to the shelf and pick up bulk cereal, let's say, or bulk, um, oh, Chef Boyardee kind of thing. So so in, in normal times, quote unquote, what would your typical guest base be in terms of the number of, uh, pack, of meals or packages you were distributing as opposed to what you're seeing currently? So in normal times, we set up our, um, the, inside the church, we set it up like a mini grocery store. People get to choose, and they get to choose, depending on the size of their family, how many items off each shelf. So they, we have rolling shelves, and then we have tables of produce, and they get to choose that. Now, and that was about 85, average of 85 families before this all happened. At this point in time, I was all up to about 158 families. Um, it's dropped down a little bit. Um, we're running between 130 and about 140 right now. So um, not quite a hundred percent increase, but getting there. Yes. Well, hoping we don't get there. We yeah. we saw a little back off on all our pantries, a little, and and I do know personally people who are back working that don't need the help like they did, and and we love to hear that. You know, I have I have friends in town who have taken advantage of the food pantry, knowing they have their own business, their husband has their own business, they weren't working and. All of a sudden, a few a month into it, month and a half, they're hurting a little bit, and and all of a sudden, they're like a light went on. Wait a minute, I know Sherry's down the road, and so that's why we're there for the for anybody in need. Well, that's wonderful, and I know uh, just recently, I guess Saturday, uh, Zen and Now did a yoga fundraiser for you and taking donations and things. So I know there is good community support. And you did share with me um, the address and the details, which we will include uh, when this broadcast goes out tomorrow for people who would like to make donations. Uh, is there anything I haven't touched on that you would like to add? Oh, I think you've hit all the areas. Um, we are always in need of uh, meals in a can and rice and cereal. Um, nothing goes to waste. So we, we appreciate everything the community is doing. And there are many small groups doing, uh, the Black Point Men's Group uh, did a small food drive the other day for us, and it was fantastic. Um, a woman next door is doing her um, exercise class. She started yesterday, and about 15 people showed up, and all the funds are coming towards uh, for us, which is just great. So people are really reaching out. Well, that, that's wonderful. We are blessed to live in such a, a wonderful community where people are willing to recognize that there is need there and help others. Yes. So I want to thank you, Sherry, so much for the work you're doing. I know everyone is very grateful. I will encourage everyone to join with me in supporting you. And, you. you know, God willing, we will see recovery, both the physical in terms of the virus and economic in terms of everything else. And your need will dissipate a bit, but it's wonderful Hopefully. to know that you're going to be there in the future to help everyone. We will be there. All right. Thank you. Thank you for joining with me today. Thank and I enjoy the rest of your day. You too.